Hey everyone, welcome back to InvestStream. As you can see, I'm no longer on a beach, but today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about getting from an idea to funding. Coming up right after this. Welcome back everyone. So, many people have ideas, but a lot of times they get stuck on execution. Sometime in the future, they may come across a company that did what they were thinking about and say, I had an idea way before they did. Well, having an idea isn't enough. I like to say ideas are a dime a dozen, and the only thing that really, really matters is the execution of the idea. So where do you start after coming up with an idea that you think could change the world? I'm gonna share 10 steps that I think will help you get from an idea to being ready to start raising money. Number one, the problem. It's important that you define the problem clearly after talking to many potential customers or users that may have the same problem that you're trying to attack. Now, it's important that you talk to them and really get an objective view of whether this is a problem for them. Once you've done that, define it. Now go out and say, number two, the solution. If it is a real problem for a lot of folks, great. You've identified something that is an opportunity. Now go out and figure out what the solution is going to look like. Define it as best as you can. I know it's tough at that early stage, but as best as you can, because it's gonna help you with the other steps. Now, number three, customer research. This is kind of a continuous thing. You're always gonna be doing customer research, but I put this as a distinct step because it's important that you talk to the users and customers again that you spoke to before and show them mock-ups of your solution maybe you know something really simple like creating screens in powerpoint or even just drawing it out on paper show it to them get some of their feedback and say this is the product this is how it would work this is this is how it would solve your problem and get some feedback from them number four mvp minimum viable product if the users that you spoke to in step number three are excited about your solution and maybe some of them are even ready to pay for it then start building an MVP now. An MVP is your minimum viable product. And I stress minimum because you want to build out the bare minimum functionality that's necessary in this stage. It's important that you stick to that because speed becomes important. Try to spend about a week, maybe less if you can, to get this minimum viable product out the door. Now, once you have your MVP ready, it's time to start getting some feedback. So you're coming back to customer research or number three, right? So number five is MVP feedback. Reach out to your early cohort of users and customers and ask them if they would spare 20 minutes to sit down with you so you can show them the product and get their feedback. In person is great, but doing this remotely is okay also. I find that sitting down in front of a user and actually sitting with them, talking to them, watching them, is a lot more helpful, but if you have to do it remotely, that's okay. Uh, it also helps to have a series of questions prepared in advance so that you know, you're know you not wasting their time or your time. You know what you wanna ask, you know what information you wanna get from them, and then you can leave a little section where they can add in additional comments or something like that. So have a survey prepared in advance. Number six, which I call the triple D, review the feedback, with your whole team. Discuss, debate, and decide. If you and your team decide that it makes sense to move forward, polish up the MVP, stabilize it, and target a closed alpha test group of maybe 500 to 1,000 users for a B2C product, and maybe one or two potential paying customers for a B2B product, right? Target that, and now start getting the product ready. Now, there's gonna be some divergence on how to proceed for a B2B versus a B2C company, so I'll focus on most of the commonalities right now. Number seven, feedback loops. Try to create a feedback loop between the users and your team right into the product. Some feedback from users can be ignored until the right time. Many users will ask for features that they think they need, um, but this could lead to feature creep too early uh, and very easily also. So it's a good idea be, to be clear on what the solution is not from a, not just from a business perspective, but also from a product perspective, so you keep focus, and your team stays focused also. Number eight, 
product release schedules, try to establish a cadence for product releases. In their really, really early alpha and beta days, even daily releases aren't out of the question. A lot of startups do daily releases when they're just getting started. Uh, mostly because they're finding new bugs, they're fixing those bugs, they're optimizing certain things, they're adding new features, so they want users to get access to those pretty quickly. So that's okay. Um, but establishing a release day helps to create a rhythm for the product and development teams. It can also result in the team hitting target dates and milestones more often rather than things getting delayed. Uh, this is also a good time to start establishing product and business KPIs that are important for you to track. Number nine, launch. Once the product is stable and usage is a bit more consistent, it's time to start planning for an official launch. Uh, this might be where you want to begin marketing the product or open it up to a wider group of beta users. Uh, something like Dropbox is free storage for every referral that signs up might be something that you want to think about at this point, but start planning your release, start planning how you're going to market this, how you're going to get your first 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 users. Now, number 10, to raise or not to raise. Once you're done with the official launch and your product is available to the public or just about any other B2B customer, if you're a B2B product, it's a good time to start paying close attention to those KPIs that you started tracking earlier. Um, those KPIs will tell you what kind of course corrections you need. Uh, it's a good idea to start baking that into how you're running your business really, really early on. And as you start figuring out these KPIs and really understanding what they're telling you about your business, now's where you can start planning whether you want to raise money from investors or not. Don't forget to catch my video about raising money. There are going to be a lot of challenges along the way. You know, a key member of your team might leave. Co-founders might start arguing about various things. There may not be enough money to do everything that you need to do. Uh, users were super excited about the problem early on, but after you spent two months getting a beta ready for them, they just wouldn't use it. Corporate bureaucracy prevented uh, your customer from moving forward uh, quickly enough. Lots of different issues. The only thing that matters is perseverance. Stick with it, keep pushing, keep iterating, both the product and the business. I hope this was helpful, and if you've got other tips or tricks that you've used to get from an idea to a product and a product to funding, please share them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear them, and I'm sure a lot of the other founders watching this would love to hear it also. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the little bell so you can get notified of the latest episodes. Thanks again for joining me on Investream. I'll see you again next time.